So this is a video on how to manage Achilles tendinopathy, specifically non-insertional Achilles tendinopathies. Achilles tendon injuries are the most common tendon injury in the body, and a little more than 25% of people who get them go chronic, or even a year later they're still, still dealing with them. There is some new research showing that it's not just exercises that are important, but it's the production of vascular endothelial growth factor, it's pro the production of uh, growth hormone, it's different things that stimulate tendon remodeling. Tendons have small cells in them called tenocytes. Tenocytes rebuild. They create crosslinks and do all these wonderful things. Some great research has shown that mild restriction of blood flow with uh, blood flow restriction straps increases the production of vascular endothelial growth factor markedly. It also increases the production of growth hormone, which accelerates tendon repair. So you are going to throw these on. And right. these little straps, I'll hold this one for you, have three markers where there's Velcro that allow you to put gradually greater resistance. In the old days, people used really high resistance to completely occlude blood flow, which was a real problem. Hey, that was fast. So the triple stick, this part of it goes out, points up like that, and each time you pass one of the Velcro markers, you pull a little bit tighter. And they showed that older people with um, arthritis got the same increases in strength when they used light weights using blood flow restriction straps, as when they used heavy weights without. It's because when tendons are injured, they don't tolerate as much stress. You have to keep the resistance light. Two papers have come out showing that when you do eccentric loads or Achilles strengthening, you get the same outcomes with light resistance when you're using this. So these are easy to put on, and let me have you turn face the wall. Next thing we're gonna do is use the toe pro to strengthen the Achilles tendon. Let me have you put your toes in that center crest, and Carrie's gonna get a nice shot of that right there. So to start this, the platform is tilted to the side and then the toes are on the crest. And the latest research is showing that the Achilles tendon, which tolerates a force of seven times body weight, shares load between the flexor hallucis longus muscle, the peroneus longus muscle, and it's extremely important to be strong in the soleus muscle, which is in through here. There's a little test to evaluate your own soleus strength, which I'll go over in a second. But to do this exercise, in order to recruit all these different fibers, you have to move the foot through a full range of motion. The research on standard um, exercise protocols for managing Achilles injuries, they have you get on the edge of a stairway, straight leg, bent leg, go up and down. If the rear foot is maintained in the same position, you don't access all of these fibers. The two or 300,000 muscle fibers you have in your calf connect to two or 300,000 tendon fibers and fascicles in the tendon. And when a, fiber over, when a muscle fiber over here moves, it pulls on the fascicle in the tendon. And they have shown that variation in the movement of those fascicles determines who gets injured. The people who have the widest um, asymmetry of movement patterns, where they're moving fibers over here, fibers over here, are least likely to be injured. In other words, they have to recruit all these different muscles. So if you just do single leg heel raises or heel raises on a stair, you're not going to access them because they've shown that different muscles fire when the foot is inverted or everted. So Ruben's going to do this exercise, and to do it, you start with your foot tilted out, which is inversion, and you slowly raise up, and as you raise up, you're going to drive the toes down. You're also going to roll in. So as he's rolling in, he's using muscle fibers over here. As he's rolling out, he's using muscle fibers over here. And Carrie, this is important. If you could take a picture of this, let me have you go up. Ruben does this perfectly. You see how he drives his toes down in that foam? That fires flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus. That, in turn, can offload the Achilles tendon markedly. A lot of people try to offload the Achilles tendon with heel lifts. And heel lifts that raise up the heel in a shoe. I dislike that because they decrease activity in the calf muscles. And they make it feel good, but it's not a solution. So my favorite protocol is, through, is four sets of 25 repetitions. And that's based on research showing that 4 times 25 produces the same strength gains as the three sets of 15 at full effort. Because tendons tend to be injured when you're doing this, they can't tolerate as much weight. And because he's got the blood flow restriction straps on, he can keep the weight light. So now this is where it gets interesting. When you do this exercise, that's your first set of 25. You can take a 20-second rest after doing that. The next set is done with the knees bent. So you're, I say you could take a rest, but you can't. <laughs> So you're going to get back on that, and now knees are bent, raise up, 
This target soleus muscle. The soleus muscle produces eight times body weight. It is the strongest contributor to ankle plantar flexion, and they showed that weakness of soleus is the best predictor of Achilles injury. So keep moving through that four times 25, and go down. So this is a good pattern. As you go up, you roll in. Because remember, you want to, and raise up, you want to go through a full range of motion to fire all these different muscles. With the knees bent, he's targeting the soleus muscle. So after another set of 25, you repeat that. When we're done with the four sets of 25, and you can take a rest for a second, this is where it's, it's interesting, and this is probably the most important part of this protocol. It's isometric contractions. Isometric contractions. Someone just did a paper. Let me have you get on this again one more time. Isometric contractions create a force through the tendon that when it's maintained, it squeezes fluid out of the muscle, out of the tendon rather. You can get a 13% reduced volume in that tendon by the force of the isometric contraction. And someone showed that the squeezing where the fluid exits the tendon stimulates tenocytes to remodel. A prior paper also showed that when a muscle vibrates because it's tensing, that that vibration stimulates internal repair. So instead of doing the classic Alfredson protocol, three times 15, the muscle's not vibrating, the muscle's not losing fluid. After fatiguing it with um, the standard Topro, you're gonna raise up just, a, just like that, hardly at all. You're gonna push your toes down, you're gonna have your heels a quarter of an inch from the floor, just like that, and you're gonna hold it like that for 30 seconds. As he's doing this hold, everything's in a lengthened position, flexor house, as long as the Achilles tendon is, exercising muscles in lengthened positions stimulate um, repair markedly, but what this is doing, he is now in a position where he is lengthening the fascicles inside the tendon. The healthy portions of that tendon lengthen more, so that exposes the tendinopathic region. It exposes the damaged region to the mechanical stress necessary to remodel. And Keith Barr showed this, that healthy tendons have a significant amount of slide and once that slides out of the way, only then do you expose the damaged tendons to trauma, which is necessary for repair. If you did not do this, you would only be working the healthy tendons. So this isometric contraction at the end, and that's 30 seconds so you can rest. I just do a 20 to 30 second rest after each isometric contraction because you want to create an environment where the muscle fatigues so it starts to shake because it tries so hard. And if that isn't enough, because you're stronger than I am, I have people when they do this, let me have you do that. If they're not fatiguing with the isometric contraction, I just give them a weight. And now when they do their 30 second hold, they just hold that weight. And alternate, and you can one set of, you'll do four times 30 seconds, um, two are with knee straight, two are with knee bent. So to do knee bent, let's just give an example. That target solely is more, just like that. If, if you're not fatigued, use more weight. If you don't have access to a weight, let me have you put that weight down, I'll grab it. You can just put the toe pro farther from the wall, just like this. And then you're gonna grab on that and do that wall lean. So if you don't have access to a weight or you just don't feel like using it, lean forward into the wall and now drive down. Everything is lengthened here. Remember, when muscles are exercised in lengthened position, it stimulates repair, and um, you are, with an isometric contraction, you're driving fluid out of there, allowing the healthy portions to lengthen, and that is the best possible way to strengthen the Achilles tendon. The only other thing that I do, let me have you step up with that, for cases where people are weak in their peroneals, there's that alternate exercise for um, peroneus longus, we you're gonna do that. So remember I said flexor hallucis longus, the muscle that goes to the big toe, can offload the Achilles tendon. Peroneus longus is a muscle that runs from here, wraps under here, and then attaches under to the base of the big toe. When it fires, it offloads the Achilles tendon markedly, and someone just published a paper, Sullivan, showing that people with plantar fasciitis, they don't have differences in foot architecture, they have peroneal weakness and intrinsic weakness. So let me have you lean sideways against the wall. The target peroneus longus, that foot's off the ground, knee is bent. Now he's gonna push sideways into the wall. That's peroneus longus firing right there. It fires like mad. I will do three sets of 25 with this repetition. Keep doing that, Ruben. 
that little spot, that's Peronius longus firing. If pe a lot of times people can't do three times 25 with this, and three times 15 is enough until they build up to the three times 25. And that is the best way to target Peronius longus. That combination, isometric, fire all of the synergists, lengthen the tendon, isometrically contract to drive fluid out and cause vibration, and strengthen Peronius longus. That is the best way to manage, the best exercise protocol for managing Achilles tendinopathy.